go without telling us about another project that you were researching uh, that goes back to your gold mining days. And you told me something about this off camera that was so unbelievable that it's, it's, it's um, an extraordinary story that I would love you to share. It's got nothing to do with MMS, something to do with disposing of radioactive waste. Tell us about this. Yeah, well, we were working with uh, recovering extra gold, precious metals from, from um, ores, and we learned to um, burn the ores with a high, uh, uh, high, at a high temperature. And in and burning those ores at the high, high temperature, we found that we could uh, reduce the uh, if there was any radioactivity in certain ma certain materials and materials that were re radioactive, we learned that we could reduce the radioactivity to zero. And so we started experimenting with different radioactive materials. And an example was a radioactive material in uh, uh, that's in uh, the pipes. Uh, uh, oil pipes that they use to transport oil in uh, the southern states to different places from the oil wells. And uh, they, those pipes have to be cleaned out ever so often. They're radioactive. And the material's radioactive in there. It's a low radiation, but it's high enough that the government won't let you throw it away. And they won't let you keep it. So if you can't keep it and throw it away, they, they sort of wind it up in piles here and there and 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 uh, it's illegal but there's nothing you can do with it and so we got some of that material and we were able to reduce the radiation to zero by burning it and in a process of burning it it created enough precious metals in there to more and pay for the process it was uh, in fact you could make about a thousand dollars per ton above the cost of burning the material and we had a, a burning material for example was it's a material that we add to it a material about like gunpowder and with the gunpowder and the proper the proper uh, uh, chemicals added to that the radiation always dropped to zero I mean, it takes three days after you burn it for the radiation to go all the way to zero and we had very good Geiger counters and that sort of thing, and we, we demonstrated the process to um, Texas A&M and other universities, uh, three or four other universities finally sent professors to look it over and see if we were lying or what. <laughs> and it, it always, we always demonstrated it, it always showed it worked, and, and nobody ever believed it. <laughs> I can't tell you how bizarre this sounds. This is impossible, what you're talking about. That's uh, true. Uh, it sounds impossible. It sounds impossible. Yes. But uh, I have to say that uh, there's a lot of things that are impossible. It gets done all the time. You, want, you can take a chicken and, and uh, put it in a place where it can't possibly get any calcium and it'll still produce eggs. So. That I've, yes, that's right. There seems to be a biological capacity for transmutating elements. That's right. And I know that in mainstream biology that's regarded as witchcraft thinking, but there is some evidence for this. But you're saying that there's some kind of a chemical transmutation of elements that's taking place when you burn this, ra uh, this radioactive waste in a particular way. Is that right? Yes, I think it, we, we produce a particular type of gunpowder that produces really, really high temperature. Burn slow. Don't go bang. It goes slow. But it produces a, 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 such a high temperature you really don't want to look at it because it's, it'll hurt your eyes. But it produces a really, really high te uh, temperature and then you just let it sit there until it uh, cools. You grind it up, and you get a certain amount of uh, of uh, precious metals out of it, and uh, and and then, like I say, the uh, the radioactive always goes to background level. Nothing left. It's always gone completely. In three days. In three days. That is bizarre. I can't. <laughs> I can't tell you how bizarre this is. If anyone here doesn't have a physics or a chemistry background, this is really bizarre. <laughs> that's an incredible story but of course 
there's a message to this, isn't there, which is that you've got to be prepared to examine the unbelievable in order to make breakthroughs in any kind of science That's or technology. Right. And one of the messages here is that mainstream academic processes don't allow one to do that because you've got to work within the system. Well, anybody wants the uh, anybody who wants the formula, I'd be glad to tell them how to do it. With the, with the one um, idea that if they actually make a, a a business from it or use it somewhere, I get part of the profits. <laughs> <laughs> so this is another thing that people can contact you about. That's an amazing story. Yeah, they could contact me if they they're really interested and they have money or something that they want to do it with, and just just for uh, casual interest, I don't see any any point in discussing it casually. Okay. Well, you want to be careful about this because you're going to get a lot of messages from people when they hear it. But uh, okay, listen, I've got one last question um, before we close. Mm -hmm. What happened to that hat? You had a beautiful hat, which I met you in. Um, 40 months ago. Uh, actually, it was just about as good as the one you got. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I loved that hat, and I was I always like wearing that hat. The problem with it is, is I keep thinking about the idea that if those bad guys ever come for me, they're going to they're going to say, just go down the street there and shoot the guy with a hat. <laughs> and I figure I figure I'm not going to give them that much satisfaction I'm, and I, I, they'll probably give me another 10 seconds or 15 seconds to get away if I don't have a hat on. <laughs> you think I should be taking this advice on board? I think you should <laughs> because you're one of the guys that are going to be mad at.